Loudness and the whole loudness war has always been a fascinating subject for me. Not just because of the engineering and technicalities, but also because of the psychology around it. And today I want to look at a subject that is actually connected to loudness in multiple ways. So let's get started. If you want to learn more about loudness and also about what happens with your music after it leaves the studio and gets onto Spotify or whatever streaming service you're using, uh, I highly recommend reading the AES TD1008. I'll link it in the description down below. This is the recommendation for loudness of internet audio streaming and on-demand distribution. Now, it's a recommendation. That doesn't necessarily mean that it works this way. But what we've seen in the past is that uh, when the AES recommends something, um, the industry will adopt it over time. So this document is super interesting. There's a lot of info in there. For instance, the whole loudness recommendation, um, where they also make a difference between speech and music. And they also explain why there's a difference between those. An interesting number here is the minus 16 LUFS recommendation. And this is an interesting recommendation, most of all, because services like Spotify actually normally normalize at minus 14 LUFS and that's also why my shirt says minus 14 and not minus 16 because I like to look at what the industry is doing instead of what is being recommended but that is an interesting uh, interesting part interesting to read they're also talking about virtual assistants I mean imagine that a lot of people have speakers at home that are also their virtual assistant the Google or the Alexa or whatever and they're recommending a loudness level for the assistant so that levels stay the same so that people do not have to reach out for the volume button that in most cases isn't even on the thing they're talking in here about the normalization workflow like how do they recommend to normalize for loudness like where do you do the volume control do you do this on the server side on the client side or maybe even with high-end decks you are instructing the exact volume in the DA converter to go up and down or maybe in the amplifier or whatever uh, also what do you do with classical music how to tackle album normalization how to work with the metadata uh, and all that kind of stuff however there's one spec in here that they're talking about throughout this paper and that's the minus 1 db true peak threshold and honestly i knew about this recommendation like all streaming services are asking for a minus 1 db true peak file so I give it to them, but I've never really thought about the why. And that is something that I want to talk about today. Because in the end, all these recommendations and specifications are there for all of us. They're not there against us, they're actually there to help us. They are there to help us, the engineers, they are there to help the artists, and they are there to help the most important people in the world, which are the listeners, which are the people that consume the content that we make, the people that enjoy the content that we make. And in a studio, we want to create something that is predictable. I mean, we care a lot about translation of our mixes, like checking it in our car or at home or whatever. We want our mixes to translate. We want that what we are doing in the studio has a predictable outcome in the end. And by understanding these recommendations and specifications, they're not the same, we can make our deliveries way more predictable. And that's also what the true peak stuff is about. It's actually the second specification that is on the shirt. And yes, I'm promoting the shirt. I'm proud of the design. It's in the description down below. It's in the merch shelf down below. And just make sure that whenever somebody asks you about loudness, that you know all the answers. All right, true peak, DB true peak. What does that mean? When we are working in the box, so with digital audio, we are measuring our levels usually on dbfs that stands for decibels on a full scale so zero dbfs is our maximum db level volume level peak level however you want to call it zero dbfs means that all our bits are full in most cases we're using 24 bits internally maybe more whatever that's a different discussion, but zero dBFS means all our bits are full. When all our bits are full, it shows zero dBFS, but that is with a normal peak meter. 
The problem is that our bits can be full. As you can see in this track, you can see that we have some, some rooftops here. And honestly, I don't think Reaper is the best in rendering waveforms when it comes to uh, what the bits are actually doing. I've tried to clip it more, but it still tried to render a nice waveform. It's probably rendering True Peak, whatever. Our bits are full here. And here, like you can see, it's, it's clipping. And I know it's clipping because I checked it. So what happens there is that when our waveform clips, we will see going up. And then this is our clipping point. Our waveform will do this a little bit and then go down again like this. I'm not the best person to draw whatever. Maybe it will go down a little bit and then clips here as well on the negative side of the waveform, then go up again and clip here again and then go down. And if you ask a normal peak meter, it will say about this part, it will just say like, hey, this is zero dBFS. It's like the, the full scale that we can measure and that's all and done. But if you're going to take a look at, at this signal about what will happen when it needs to get into the analog domain, which it eventually needs to get. Like analog, it still matters. Even our earbuds, whatever, the last part of that signal chain is analog because it, it needs to drive a speaker that's analog. So it's not if it will get, it's when it gets to the analog domain. This signal needs to comply with the band limiting requirements of PCM sampling. And what that means is that frequencies above Nyquist are not allowed. So this, this and this, which are kind of like a square wave, would need a way higher bandwidth than is allowed in PCM sampling. So what they are doing in the converters is um, they are adding an output filter. And that output filter is there to not allow frequencies above Nyquist. But what that filter will do is shape this square wave, this DC, into a frequency that it needs to be. Now, if we would draw a line here for the zero dBFS, it's easy to see that we're now above our zero dBFS. Now, we are calling this phenomenon of going above zero dBFS, we're calling this overshoots. And the problem with overshoots is that the signal path that a user could be using isn't always designed to handle that and is definitely not designed to handle this in a predictable way. And it gets even more interesting if there are multiple things in the signal path after the DA step. For instance, DC blocking filters that are in analog devices or, or high pass filters or whatever else they design into it, 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 it gets very unpredictable. Now let me let me lower the signal of this, this thing by a lot. Like let's lower this to minus Eight. Let me also insert a tone generator and playback a tone at minus 12. Send this to the console. Uh, so that's Neumann 7 and 8. We try to calibrate the console so that it's at unity gain. Like, like just input is output. Turn this off and play back this music that I have over here and watch the differences in levels. So I'm sending it on a lower level to the console um, um, just so that I have some headroom to show you all some things. Um, it doesn't matter if it exactly clips at the converter. It matters that it clips in the, in the audio file. We've got peaks that cannot exist. And if we gain it down afterwards, it doesn't really matter. And, and you can see that. You can see this already. Like, look at how the waveform comes out. And, and we're, we're like, at what level are we? Minus five. So we were at minus eight. Minus eight is our original level, and we're now at minus five. So we are three decibels, more than three decibels over it. So if you want to know your exact true peak values, you don't have to run it through analog, of course, or whatever. You can just use a true peak meter, which does some wizardry in the background to calculate the actual true peak values. And there are lots and lots of those meters, uh, the one in the uh, Sonable, True Level, I think in the Fab Filter there's a True Peak Meter, Orban has a True Peak Meter. Like, they're everywhere. There's no excuse <laughs> to not have a True Peak Meter. Now, where do I want to go with this? Well, as I said in the beginning of the video, it's all about predictability. And if you follow specifications and recommendations, chances are way bigger that you are actually getting what you are expecting to get. And I'm sometimes seeing comments from engineers and end users and, and whatever that streaming services uh, do not deliver the quality that they were expecting. 
And when I dig deeper into these situations and check out the tracks and the deliveries that they did and whatever, almost all of the times I see that they didn't follow specifications in the first place. I'm not saying that because of not following the specifications, the track sounded worse on streaming services, but I am saying that you cannot complain about something if your delivery wasn't up to spec in the first place. Spotify is asking you for a minus one dB true peak file, you deliver a minus one dB true peak file. If it sounds bad after following the specs, you have a right to complain. And actually Spotify and basically all stream services, they should listen. But if you don't even follow the specs in the first place, why should they listen to you? And on top of that layer, it's weird. It's really weird because people that do not follow the specs are basically the loudness people. And, and if you think about why they are doing that, why are they mastering at minus six LUFS? There are a lot of psychology reasons behind that. They, 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 they want to be, they want to stand out. And in order to stand out, you have to be in control. And by pumping up the loudness of your track, you are getting control over the over the volume of the end user. But think about that, like you want to be in control, but then you're mastering clipping and above zero dB true peak or the better spec, minus one dB true peak. You're clipping above that, which basically makes you lose control again. Like, what are you doing? If it's really all about loudness, if that's the thing that in your mind, will sell you more tracks or give you more followers or whatever. If it's really still, after all this this normalization stuff, and if it's if it's still about that, if that's the thing that you, you're grasping on, and if that's your 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 value, you might consider looking inside. You might consider figuring out where that comes from. What is driving you to still want to pursue those loud tracks, non-dynamic tracks? What what What's the mechanism? Because this whole thing about wanting to be louder could actually block your development from getting further, further in the business, further in, in your career, whatever. Really check what is going on. Why, why, what, how, you know, think about it. Think, think about, and think deep about it. Think really, really deep about it. Like, wh what are you doing? Now, I still haven't given the reason for the minus one dB true peak instead of minus zero dB true peak. Because if you measure on true peak, zero dB true peak or like minus 0.1 dB true peak should be enough. And basically the minus one dB true peak rule is just there for Spotify uh, because a codec also does overshoot. First of all, of course, on, on clipping stuff. Uh, but second of all, it always needs a little bit of room. Is it maybe a little bit too much room? Well. I don't know, that's not up to me to decide. I think minus one dB true peak is fine. I mean, it's just one dB, it's okay. Just keep in mind that that is what streaming services are requesting. It's fascinating that, that streaming services do not reject files based on a technicality like this. They are already far on, on their way in ending the loudness war with uh, loudness uh, normalized playback. In my opinion, they should actually remove the whole toggle of turning it off. But anyway, that's a whole different story. They are well underway in tackling that problem. And I think by just, you know, educating people about minus one to be true peak and rejecting files that are just not up to their standards with the reasoning behind it that they cannot guarantee a predictable high quality playback of such a file, I think can be really something to make people aware of this standard. Because believe me, not a lot of people in the industry actually know the standards recommendations and that kind of stuff, which is weird. I mean, imagine going to the doctor and him not exactly knowing what he is doing. I mean, that's, like, that's weird. But a lot of people in the industry don't know about the standard. And I had a lot of files uh, sent back from most of our A&R managers um, that said to me like, hey, it's not peaking at zero. What is going on? And then I have to explain them that I'm doing my job and that they should shut up. And that's an awkward position to be in because they are usually higher in rank than I am. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's all that I wanted to say about this subject. If you want to spread the message, you can consider uh, getting the merchandise. Um, it's all linked in the description down below. I, I just I just love this thing so much. I just, I really like it. It also creates cool discussions with people from outside of the industry. And it, it challenges me a little bit into explaining it in in 
you know, very simple terms. And I just think it's really cool. Now, if you like my videos and want to support me, consider checking out my Patreon campaign or YouTube memberships. Um, content is the same on both. And one of the things that's on there that is connected with this subject is a whole freak show about analog reference levels. I'll link that video over here. If you just want to watch a different video, I'll link an interesting video about mastering over here. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep pushing and bye bye.